Let's do this. We're recording. Is it though? Yes. Is it? Yes. Yeah, it is. And uh, then I got this intro here to play. So here goes in three, two, one. When a moose takes a dump, you walk about 50 yards in any direction and they take another dump. And when a moose takes a dump, they'll crap out between two and 400 turds every time they take a crap. So I get jumping right up and down. I get excited when I see a turd. This game is the most confused game of that I'm knowing. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this show. This is the morning stream. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to TMS, the morning stream for Monday, March 8th, 2021. Scott Johnson here, Brian Ibbett there. Good morning, Brian Ibbett. Hello, Scott Johnson. Happy <clears throat> brand new week to you. Did you did you take the wrapping off slowly for this new week? Or did I did. You, uh, I did. I peeked. Uh, just rip it off and dump the wrapping on the floor. I peeked in there. I, uh, mm -hmm. I shook got a good a little look bit. at it. Yeah, shook it. Shook it all night mm -hmm. long. And then uh, here we am today with a hot new day, hot new month, looking ready for the big, big day. Not really. Mm -hmm. Actually, I am mm -hmm. kind of. I got good news. Uh here in Utah, I guess we're ahead of the curve, or we're ahead of our curve. I don't know what everyone else's curve is, but uh, you, you're definitely ahead of the curve uh, compared to many states. <laughs> yeah, we must yes. we must be, but we apparently have moved down to a more general population age range and group, and uh, mm -hmm. we can now get the uh, I can now get the the jab, the first jab. That's awesome. Uh huh. And I go in on the 19th. That is, that's a Friday, and uh, go in there at about around lunchtime, and then so, for some reason, even though my wife's technically age range just outside the window of the new range they're mm -hmm. letting her in anyway since we're coming together may as well just kill two birds with one stone so we're doing Might as well. yeah. doing us both that day and i'm very excited Listen, that's that's not just any friday scott that's uh winter soldier and falcon friday oh my gosh is. so i'm going to do this and then come home and then and hopefully not feel like crap and, and then watching that, yeah. And then put off watching Falcon and Winter Soldier for uh, six weeks. Uh, I That one I may not be able to get away with because Kim Kim's all tuned in on this. She really wants to see that one. Oh, really? Yeah. More yeah. so than uh, WandaVision. Yeah. she's it's really, She likes that Stan Sebastian, yeah, doesn't she? Sebastian Stan is his real name. Sebastian yes. Stan. <laughs> Stan. I was uh, Sebastian. giving his military name. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It would be right. You put the last name first, and why not? Well, yeah. I mean, come on. I didn't get that wrong. I just, I just gave it the military treatment because yeah. he's military. Duh. Last I saw him, uh, Spider Man killed him in that uh, Devil All the Time show I saw on Netflix. So he's got a lot to make up for after Spider Man killed him. Anyway, uh, it was, uh, it was easy, and we got into the website and did the thing, and and it said, hey, uh, oh, it actually originally said oh, the fifteenth, but then. Later, when I hit submit, it then said the 19th. So it was clear, clearly things were filling up, you know. Did yeah. it tell you which one you're getting? Yes, getting the uh, Pfizer. The Pfizer. Pfizer. The Pfizer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember we talked about that. Uh, Carter pronounces it Pfizer. Yeah, a little German in my Jokingly. veins is what I'm getting. Uh -huh. So thank you, Germany. <laughs> I know a little German. I got a little German in me. <laughs> mm, yeah, I do now. I will now. Uh, so that'd be yeah. cool. And then they scheduled the three weeks and you, and you, and you do the thing. Um, and I'm do I picked. They let us pick. Actually, they said you want Moderna. They were like it was like a menu. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I okay. said, uh, oh, we get to choose. Let's do let's do Pfizer because I'd heard Moderna is harder on you for the uh, mm -hmm. for the little mini flu you get, the little mini COVID you get, and right. the uh, the P Pfizer was less so, um, <laughs> but just as effective. So that's what I did. Glad to see you changed your mind on the getting the Johnson and Johnson in uh, in Mr. Johnson. Yes. You know. Because yes. it was, uh, was it like sixty five percent or something seventy whatever it is seventy percent seventy percent effective for retransmission or or um, uh, what's the word when when you can infect other people around you mm. but still like ninety nine percent effective on preventing death oh well then there's two there's like efficacy and then there's you know there's the there's the retransmission rate, and then there's the death. All of them are really good for preventing death. <laughs> well, that's good. Let's not pre let's prevent death. I'm thinking. Yes, prevent death. So uh, between now and then, we're gonna be extra cautious because, gosh dang it, wouldn't that suck if uh, if you caught it right before to get it you right reach before. a thing? Yeah. yeah, that would that would blow. So we're gonna do real good there. But instead, uh, or uh, to tempt a little bit of fate, we went to the zoo yesterday. The zoo. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had a thing where they were they make no money now because no one goes to the zoo right now. It's like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a problem. Aww. And I think I understand why. It's not just because of COVID. It's this. Okay, so they only let a certain number of people in. You got to buy tickets right. within a certain range. We were going to take Van. Mm-hmm. Uh, and our goal was like, all right, well, we'll just stay outside and not be in the, the humid, like, you know, lizard stadium thing or any of that stuff. We just be out sure. here in the, in the periphery. Right. All of the outside stuff. None of the like interior, the buildings. Yeah. You can go in and Those see feel stuff. like yep. bad. They feel like bad places for COVID time. <laughs> just right now. Yeah. Yeah. It mm-hmm. seems like a bad idea. So, so that was our plan going in. What's funny though, is we get there and the che- tickets were cheap. I was like, sweet, man. This is like half or more than half off of what it usually is to come to this thing in normal times and uh we got there and uh the animals outside were actually out and kind of about which was nice usually they're sleeping or something in the summer they're terrible to see because they just all they're all hot and they're sleeping underneath stuff you can't see them so van got mm-hmm. to see all these animals and stuff but they shut down anything that was indoor of any kind Oh, so you didn't have the choice of going into no. humid limit, humid lizard stadium. Yeah. So even I, I went in there going, oh man, no way we're going to the humid lizard stadium. But now that it's closed and I see that we can't go in there, then I was like, oh, this is cheap. No one of these. <laughs> no, I want to go in. <laughs> so now these tickets seem like not as good a deal as I thought they were. But yeah. anyway, it was fine. Then we went to a park and had a nice outdoor picnic and it was lovely and Oh, very and the, nice. the boy is a hoot to be around, so that was that was loads of fun. But you got to hang out with Dan. I'm jealous of this. Cause I did. Cool. It's funny. Tina actually went to the zoo on Friday as well, uh, mm. the Denver Zoo. Similar kind of thing, but we were members, so we um, we get several free – well, we get free admission the whole year, but then we also get to bring people um, so when the kids want to go or whatever, we can take them. Right. But uh, – uh, yeah, she went Friday. Similar kind of thing. Super, you know, super low admission uh, numbers. Uh, keep everybody spaced apart. Masks 100% of the time. All that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but Saturday night I had dinner with uh, Dan and his son DJ and his friend James and James's son, whose name I'm not remembering all of a sudden. Yeah. But um, went to a nice restaurant down by the hotel and by the hockey uh, stadium where... Uh, where they played they actually had a really good weekend did really well in the tournament and even had some time yesterday to run up to loveland and and go do some skiing or snowboarding oh nice has he done that before yeah uh he has not Mm, um and so he's asking well i wonder if he has because it seemed like man you'd need more time than just half a day (laughs) (laughs) to go up there and, and try and get some skiing in or snowboarding in but um uh Looked like they, you know, the the photo they sent me from up there looked like they, uh, uh, they had had some good weather up there and good time. We, I mean, we've been having seventy degree weather this last weekend and yeah. today and tomorrow is supposed to be more of that. So it was only about sixty five for us yesterday, but it was perfect. It's perfect. Oh, it's nice. Oh yeah. man, I wanted to stay there all day. I'd walk around that zoo all day long if I could have. It was wonderful. I got out on the bike yesterday and it felt like something that had been missing from my life for so long has just been has been restored mm. so uh it was nice to finally finally get back out there just it's not the same when you're riding in front of the big screen with the uh the the people from apple fitness plus yelling at you and telling yeah. you that their life is so good in santa monica or wherever she's pissed at you right now she's not happy with you because she hasn't seen you that's all she just wants to see you <laughs> that's wants, right exactly yeah, she wants to be no with you. yeah she wants to be with you i understand yes well that's yes, cool exactly. well i'm glad you guys got to do that i haven't seen dan since geez since uh Physically, since like, like 2017 BlizzCon or something. A couple something. years. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think he made it to any of the Vegas stuff. No, he never got it to Vegas, but he got. He came to so N17. I think maybe the stuff. last time I saw him because it was the same year. Well, no, he went to BlizzCon that year, so I saw him that year. But mm-hmm. that, but he hadn't been since. Yeah. He wasn't there in 2018. So it's been a while since I've seen Dan. It has been a while. It's been too long a while. Yeah, he's had he had the natural vaccine, aka catch COVID, and then not <laughs> he did not That's give right. it to anyone. Hopefully, but uh, but good. Yeah. I'm glad uh, I'm glad you guys get to hang out. It's pretty awesome. It was fun. It was good seeing seeing all of them. Did he? Did uh, he one other quick oh, yeah. thing too with the travel um, that, that he kind of reminded me of, or where his travel reminded me of this is that yeah, I mean it was about a, a year ago that we were making the hard decision on not doing TMS Vegas and uh putting that on the bubble there and so a lot of people had to go in and do their vouchers and get their refunds and stuff just to let you know we're approaching one year on that so if you have not called your airline to check on 
the extendability of your voucher, you should do so today or soon because otherwise your voucher will expire. That money goes nowhere and you've paid for a flight that you're not even going to get to get yeah. to uh, take, uh, uh, you know, or get reimbursement on ever. Yeah. So by my calendar, we're still about a week, week and a half away from where we made the final call. But now would be the time to check it. Uh, I would check it because some of those things they told me that one of them expired or the the date that I bought the tickets, the twelve month thing had passed, mm. and um, uh, they said yeah, but we'll extend it. Frontier was being really nice and they're going to extend it for me. They did take like uh, they gave me a couple of vouchers when I canceled because it was if you take a voucher, then uh, we'll give you twenty five bucks extra. Oh, and those bad. vouchers have long expired. Those expired at the end of uh, twenty twenty. So. Oh. And there's no extension on those, unfortunately. Well, well, it was nice of them to do it, but maybe they also had an idea that people probably wouldn't use that stuff for, for 2020. Probably, exactly, yeah. yeah. They're like, yeah, uh, well, I mean, I think back then, a year ago, we were thinking, all right, four months, five months, we'll be around, you know, we'll round the corner on this stuff, it'll be nothing. And uh, here we are a year later. And we're pretty just sure my in. Delta tickets, I don't, they, I didn't have them for Nertacular, or for uh, Vegas, we were going to drive, but... Um, we had that trip planned to New Orleans for the summer, and I think those are still like they're in like some kind of permanent holding thing where you can just have it, and they just are there okay. for me. I, I would check just to be safe, but uh... yeah, I Kim supposedly did, but I'll bug her today. Just okay, make all sure right. we're all right because I think they had some they had some pretty open rule about all that, and like. I don't remember. Yeah, how it Delta's, worked. and I think on the whole, Delta's a lot better than Frontier. Frontier is a credit card company disguised as an airline. Yeah, it's a little bit of a sham over there. Sometimes. It really is. I mean, when you get on and they're pushing their their credit card thing on you uh, twice during the flight. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, okay. What's your priorities here? Oh, I got a question before we uh, we have a, a special guest joining us today for a second. But yeah. before I do that, yeah. um, it let's let's make a what, left arm or right arm. What do I do, you guys? Come on. Oh, your non-dominant arm. Does whatever, it, whatever is that what you're yeah, supposed so to do? Is non-dominant? Yeah. Okay. And you're right-handed, correct? Yes. So, so lefty. You'll do your left. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they'll just put it right up here, like at the top, right? And they're not going. They will. To your, yep. Mm -hmm. They're not like, hey, does your do you have veins in your crotch or whatever? They're not going to do that. <laughs> well, this isn't going to be they like. I uh, do that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you you could probably request it, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, get a shot in the. Uh, in the upper part of your non-dominant because that's arm. the deal with the heroin people right they they run out of veins in their regular arm stuff so they got to go like between their toes and then eventually that dries up and they got to use veins oh, in their crotch and stuff yeah. yeah my god that just gives me thinking about getting a shot in the, the like the webbing between your toes uh, or, uh, uh yeah no thanks no pass i had a needle go through my heel Big. i know how bad that can be forget it forget yeah exactly no thank you Hard pass. Hard pass. <laughs> uh, hard pass, Alan McCormick. All right, let's get in here and uh, get... Uh, we're going to have Gwen join us for a moment. Uh, yeah. You may know Gwen. Uh, she is up there running the fantastic Phoenix Pearl, Phoenix Pearl Tea. Tea. Yep. Uh, yeah. Awesome teas that uh, provide both the TMS patron with some teas, but it's, uh, we also do some stuff for There Will Be Dungeons. And uh, she's just awesome. And we're going to talk yeah. about TMS teas sure. and the flavors you're going to want to be trying these days. I don't really have a theme for this because it's not really a segment but it'd be cool if i did wouldn't it like what if yeah, i had tea, um, glorious tea <laughs> how about I say, i'll just have brian make there's it funny a here's uh -huh. a here's a sound yep that's brian brian or tom Merritt saying yep yep there you go hey gwen how's it going hello H hi how's well, my sound uh, you sound great you sound welcome great. to the show awesome fantastic yeah, thank you for joining how are y'all we're fantastic uh we're real good we just met with you the other day and talked a little bit more about what's going on at phoenixpearltea.com uh, one of the mm -hmm. first places I want to go somehow, if I can figure it out, uh, after we do get these shots and things do make sense, I want to get up to that place in uh, Montana, Montana where it's mm -hmm. located. Absolutely. Yeah. There's hardly any people up here. It's very, very easy to keep six foot distance. <laughs> yeah, that's I imagine. True. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll make like a whole proper trip out of it. Like do, you know, what do you call it? I can't think of the place now. What's it Yellowstone. Called? Yellowstone. Jeez Louise. <laughs> No, almost, literally almost... right over the hill, like the most gorgeous drive in America. Drive through Yellowstone, drive over this beautiful, mm. beautiful mountain pass. Come yeah. down into Red Lodge. It's fantastic. You ever get like Sounds a? Awesome. You ever get? Like, can you see any like weird mud pots or or uh, geysers or anything over the mountain, or is it just like that's that's over I here? I mean, not really, because Yellowstone <laughs> is a giant forest. So <laughs> that's true. I don't you know. You see why. a lot of trees and a yeah. lot of lakes. A lot of lakes. I have it in my head that. 
you guys are just like Toronto and and Vancouver. <laughs> Just right just, there, just uh, right across the street from one another. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. mud yeah. pots like right in the road outside. Yeah. Like, actually, <laughs> they're kind of are right now. That kind of sounds are awesome. <laughs> Potholes fixed. I'd be into that. Uh, well, all right, that's awesome. Uh, well, it's good to have you here. We of course do these teas through the Patreon, and we thought it'd be fun to come on and talk about, oh, uh, you know, what's going on in the tea world, what we have uh, coming yes. down the line, that sort of thing. Um, what do you got in the in the shaker right now for teas? Well, I'm about to send out the March boxes for TMS, which is going to be a bunch of our new There Will Be Dungeons teas mm-hmm. that are all coming. I mean, they're out, actually. They're they're just going to be coming to you yeah. soon. But yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about those because if nobody's signed up yet on this stream, then mm-hmm. I want to tell them about what's coming next month oh, so they can know yeah. what they will be getting. Yeah, right. Oh, because the people, this, yeah. Yeah, the people who are already so, getting it are getting it. So don't you don't have to worry. It's all you fine folks who are sitting on the fence going, man, this might finally push me over. So tell them what they can look forward to. <laughs> So I try to do a good a good mix every month of different teas. And this coming month for April, I'm going to be doing a black tea, a fruity tea, and kind of a sweet and spice tea. Mm. Uh, the Forsaken Delight is a 2019 vintage of Japanese black tea. Uh, straight up hybrid of a couple of different uh, varieties of Sinensis and Asomica. Beautiful, beautiful mixed flavors kind of fruity undertones like a wine and malty and and all this beautiful beautiful stuff doesn't need milk but you can drink it with it because i know brian probably will i do um, yep he likes to fart is it... <laughs> doesn't is it need it though. is it uh oh yeah if visible, it's black tea okay black if it's black tea it. it's caffeinated we gotcha. we don't do any cool. of the chemically decaffeinated stuff like in order to have caffeine free black tea you actually have to chemically decaffeinate oh, it really oh geez um Usually it's a decastration or something like that. Decastration. It's usually like running it through water and like blasting it with hot water and immediately sieving and drying it to get all the caffeine washed off, which dilutes the flavor. Wow. It's we don't go for that. Weird. So, yeah. so yeah. the caffeine. Uh, I didn't. Sorry, I have to ask this. The caffeine itself mm-hmm. is like a like can, if you did that process, would you see it? Would there be like little caffeine granules left over from stripping Chris, yeah. it? Really? Yeah, so uh, weird. Where where do you think energy drinks get their caffeine from? <laughs> I guess. From washed off a uh, black tea uh, decaffeination coffee. process. Yeah, right? there you go. Um. <laughs> Decaffeinated tea and coffee. They literally tumble it in big like dryers, and it like comes really? off like a powder, and they scrape it off the side and sell it to PepsiCo. Is that true? Wow. That's yeah, hundred percent. All right. So so if you're like going for a decaf, part of what you're doing is. Supporting the soft drink uh, world and Coke Zero. Or whatever. <laughs> That's sure. pretty much. That's nuts. Uh, okay. But yeah, That's this one they can use all of the leaf. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And we've got we've got good herbals that taste kind of like black tea. If you need caffeine free, I just don't like to do the the weird processed stuff. Yeah. Um. But that one's super good. Very very tasty. It'll be going out. Um. We just added a grapefruit woolong called mm. the Trap Sense. Mm. A tea for all you rangers out there. Um. And it's got tr- like chunks of grapefruit and some natural extracts, and it's made on this Bai Hao Wulong base. It's absolutely divine. Just sounds good. Stunned with how good this one is. Yeah, yeah. Grapefruits. I've... Not everybody's big on grapefruit, but yeah. everybody I've talked to has really liked this one. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, how much is it like? Great. I mean, how much of the, that flavor really comes comes through? I, I assume. Oh yeah. It, no, it comes through. It's got a nice tart grapefruit flavor. See, for I'm sure. into that. Those are my favorite kind of teas. I like those. Like, well, well my favorite kind of tea is sugar-filled freaking matchas in the morning. But <laughs> now that I can't have those so much, I love it's a good blush, man. I like cit- citrusy, like lemony, like <laughs> that kind of thing. Love that. So that's what that sounds like. I'm fan- that, I'm really excited about that one. Oh, it's it's good, and it's it's got a really nice high quality wulong as a base called Bai Hao, where like. They let these tiny little like leaf hopper bugs fly out over the plantation and like gnaw on the leaves mm. and then flush them all out. And as the tea heals itself, they pick it when it's full of a bunch of extra healing nutrients and then make the wulong out of it. Ooh. So we're drinking healing so, uh, we're, we're we're drinking healing nutrients is what you're saying. Lots of extra chlorophyll <laughs> and all that good stuff to heal the leaf. It's brilliantly flavorful just oh my god it's so good sounds really good it's my favorite style yeah i'm into Um, it with grapefruit yeah um 
And then the last one, um, I believe Brian knows, and I think Scott knows, is The Dreams of Erebus, which is a mm-hmm. calming cinnamon walnut cream herbal. Uh, good for sleepy. Yes, love this one. Yeah, I, uh, I, need, need I think sleepy. I sent that one up a year or so ago when you were having some some issues sleeping, and mm-hmm. I think it helped, if I remember It did right. help. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that stuff will knock me out. Um, <laughs> and what I need to do is brew up a second pot in the middle of the night to stay asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, that's sure. the trick, right, is having that stuff last. I made the mistake the like other day. Like an of, IV drip or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. Keep it, Just put it yeah. in your veins. Um, but I had a, uh, I had a, um, uh, I took one of those Unisom things the other day. I forgot how bad those mess me up. They completely jack up the next day. Oh yeah, just a yeah. groggy, f- gelatinous turd. Way the better entire do this next naturally day. with with tea. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, do I need to get some sent up to you? There, I Scott? mean, I might. I did drink through it all, uh, and so maybe I will. We'll talk. We'll talk. Well, but, uh, we were we were out of this stuff for like six months. There's a big big shortage on black walnut right now for mm. some reason. Um, and I use the black walnut holes for a really deep nutty flavor. It also turns the tea like pitch black. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. And it's like out everywhere. What's the difference That's between an acquired a black... taste too? I've had black walnut ice cream that was like, oh, this Ugh. has got such a strong flavor, like a As... very bitter, no. dark. Yeah. Yeah. The accent. You want an a accent. Little, of it. little bits of black walnut. Mm, yeah, a little bit. So wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. That's the difference between a black walnut and a regular walnut is just a much more intense, bitter flavor to it because they're kind mm-hmm. of bitter anyway, different, right? Different species, different varietal. Like it's. It's okay. just a different kind of walnut. It's just strong and black and angry. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> smooth and convincing, though. <laughs> yeah, smooth exactly. and convincing, but black and angry. But, I get you. No, this one's got <laughs> caramel and cinnamon and vanilla. And it, I mean, it tastes like an oatmeal cookie. It's amazing. Ooh, Is it yeah. wrong of me to like cinnamon so much that I pretty much would have it in everything all the time? Teas included? No. Okay. Nothing yeah, wrong nothing with that. Wrong with I that at all. Yeah. I need to get you the new the new D and D teas because I just did the uh, the Delver's Delight, which is like a cinnamon breakfast tea. It's mm. awesome. Oh, that does sound so good. We did talk about that a little bit the other day, and I'm pretty excited about that one. That one sounds sounds. You awesome. do dairy, Scott? Oh uh, yeah, I can do dairy. Dairy's no problem. Okay. Well, yeah, it's good. It's good with milk and. All right. He d- he also likes to fart. I like to fart. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like to... Raise your hand if you don't like to fart. Like I mean, I, fart. I mean, I nobody we, doesn't like to fart. We need to fart. We need to. Yeah, fart. Okay. exactly. Well, okay. Good. I've got it. On the subject. Yeah. I've got it in my cup right now. I'm drinking a masala chai in the morning. Dude, look I, at that gnarly. Like my latte. Look at the gnarly handle on her. That's awesome. Look at that. Oh Gnarled yeah, it's a, uh, so cool. I, I got this handmade. It's a uh, hand thrown pottery with a glaze, and they did this like tree bark style That's handle. Cool. It's, I love yeah, this it, thing. Good place for your thumb too on the top there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. No, it's it's a perfect fit for my yeah. enormous hands. It's it's brilliant. <laughs> it's like a... Unfortunately, the potter uh moved to Alaska and uh started oil drilling or something cuz the money was a lot better than ceramics. Boo. So, Boo. He doesn't make stuff anymore. Well, maybe he'll come back to it. There's always a chance. But I like it. There's it looks like it looks like the the elf king of the forest handed it to you or something. It's very <laughs> cool. That's exactly um, how I like it. <laughs> I like everything. Keep my, to look like keep the, my mornings elfy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, this is uh, all great stuff, and you can learn about all these teas and additional stuff over at phoenixpearltea.com. And of course, if you're signed up for the Patreon, expect to see those new teas coming to you soon. Uh, this is fantastic. Gwen, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll have to do this more often, kind of get caught up on what's the latest at Phoenix Pearl Tea. Yes. I you love just let that me know. Got a fun one coming down the line that Scott and I have to uh, taste uh-huh. test. Mm-hmm. test. We got something on the pipeline. Yeah. The key, uh, the key term there. Yeah, pipeline oh, yeah. flavored. Oh, yeah. Very excited about the pipeline flavored tea coming our way. <laughs> uh, Gwen, have a fantastic week. We'll see you again. Soon. You too. Thanks. Well, there she goes. <coughs> you all right? As you... I choke on my coffee. Yeah, just fine. Just yeah, fine. That's just your coffee's done. way of saying I should be tea. Just exactly. It's it's fighting. It's saying you definitely it's jealous. Have, you have low tea right now. Low tea. My, very low tea. High coffee. Low tea. <laughs> All right, uh, it's done away time. That's right. Party on the Monday. We get to have uh, Brian here, and we get to have you guys here uh, playing a little game with us. And uh, I'm going to get it all set up here so that it works properly. And then we're going to see if we can give some prizes away. So sit back and enjoy this. 
Royale. Yes, that's right. Welcome to Battle Royale, where we do stuff. And Brian Dunaway is here. Hi, Brian. <laughs> oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hi. It's nice to have you here. How are you? Are you, you doing all right? I'm yeah. doing pretty good. I mean, this week we did Film Sack on Saturday, so we had that day between, so... I'm yeah. already missing you guys, so this is good. Yeah, we it feels you. like it's been a while since we recorded films, which is so weird. It's only been a day. Yeah, yeah. Right. It really. I don't know. We all got busy. We all had stuff, and so now we did. Saturdays were stuff and things. Up, but now we're back to normal. Yeah. If y'all haven't heard Ish. our under siege, uh, siege. I keep saying siege. Under, under siege. siege. <laughs> I go uh, like siege. <laughs> uh, you're gonna want to check that out because we had a whole lot of fun talking about the only good. Steven Seagal movie, and even then, Steven Seagal yeah. and even, is Tommy and even, Lee Jones is. Yeah, and even the word "good" in that sentence is in italics. Oh yeah, very much in italics. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I would say the only good Steven Seagal movie is Executive Decision, but uh, that's oh right, because he was out of there minutes five of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so weird, and his big face is on the poster and everything. What a weird time that was. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, we have a listener face. on the line who's going to play Babel Royale with us today. Thanks for holding so long. Who's this? It's Kit London. How are you guys Kit today? London. Oh, hey, Kit. Hi, Kit's Kit. A, Kit is uh, already, you already pal around with Kit with your your playthrough of the, uh, that dungeon thing. or no, what's Yeah, it called? every uh, Thursday night, Kit gets online with me. She breaks out her big old notebook, and she tells me what I've done and where I'm going in uh, Graveyard Keeper. That's right. That game is cool. You keep tempting me to play it again. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Got some me. new DLC content, Scott. Oh get yeah, it. more z- more zombies, more uh, more zombie vampires. game of vampires. Chrome. Oh my gosh, vampires. vampires. Okay, well get your blood ready. It's gonna be sucked. Uh, all right, <laughs> Kit. Hey, it's good to have you here. <laughs> Always nice to hear your voice. Let's uh, play a game and see if we can win you some prizes. Bram, will you explain what Kit could win? I will, and it's funny because she was our inaugural version of this. Uh, Welcome to What's Your Nerd? I've interviewed a member of the Tadpool and asked them nine questions in a subject in which they consider themselves nerdy. Scott and Brian are going to take turns predicting whether or not our guest will get those questions correct. If they predict correctly, they receive a point. First player to five points wins the game. Kit, as always, your job is to choose which of our two hosts will more accurately predict our guest's knowledge in their category. And if you're correct, you win our prize package which includes from steam courtesy of wesley endless space 2 the digital deluxe edition which includes more endless i don't know how it's got more endless than the original endless (laughs) beyond endless but it's like extra endless and trine for the nightmare prince love the Trine series yeah Yeah. i don't even have four sweet yeah endless space 2 is one of my favorite uh they call them 4x games think of like um you know, civilization, that sort of thing. But this one's a, a science fiction deal. One of my favorites ever. I put so many hours into that, I can't even count them. It's a fantastic game. It's cool. Good Very winnings. Cool. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into this. Uh, let's find out who is our special guest and what is their nerd. I'm here with Bronco, Jeff Sire. How you doing, Jeff? Is that loud? Is that loud? I am. Fa- <laughs> Hold on a second. It was pretty loud. I love it. It sounds like you're live. That, yeah. that, I missed uh, those kind of things. I didn't really change loud. anything from last time. Here, let me, I'll adjust. Let's okay. see. How's this? Okay. Let's see. I'm here with Bronco, Jeff Good. Sire. How you doing, Jeff? Okay. I am fantastic. I'm glad to be here. Oh, it's good to have you here for What's Your Nerd. And uh, how are things up in Canada right now? Well, we still have snow, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to still have snow for a while, yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, you know, we're at the getting towards the end. You can see uh, some patches uh, the snow of green. starting to recede, and uh, I nice. keep going out and look at my motorcycle oot. and uot. Uh, goes oot. To, you know, go out and have a beer with my motorcycle and <laughs> we'll have a little conversation about how soon we're going to be hanging out more. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, hey, buddy. <laughs> Love you, buddy. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, as much as I'd like to say that the motorcycles or Canada is your nerd, you have an even you have a nerd that's even bigger than that. What is your nerd? Uh, my nerd that I'm doing today is the series, The Expanse, the the book series oh. and the uh, and the shows. Uh, when you asked me, I was thinking about it, and I've I've probably read each book twice, and I think I've seen wow. all of the episodes twice. So. Wow. Excellent. Well, cool. Well, let's get into these questions and see how well you know. And this, these are going to focus, by the way, on the TV series, uh, The Expanse. So, Excellent. Uh, because I haven't read the books. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, and, oh yeah. I just wanted to say something about that to anybody who hasn't seen it. Yeah. 
it, it's not that this has spoiled me for other science fiction, but it has really forced home that a lot of what we think of as science fiction is really more science fantasy. It really is. Because sci- uh, The Expanse is so razor focused on the science part of it, and they try and do like everything plausible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's probably my favorite thing about it. Absolutely. Great. Well, let's get into these and let's see how well you do with The Expanse. All right. So that's his category, The Expanse. <clears throat> Um, obviously, it doesn't matter how much you guys know about The Expanse. It just matters how Good. much Fire knows about The Expanse. <laughs> and uh, and Kit, this is where you predict who's going to do better at uh, guessing how Jeff does with his questions. Who do you think is going to win and who do you want to go first? I'm picking Dunaway to win and Dunaway to start. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. A little Dunaway favoritism from all that graveyard your, keeper time. Your double, faith in me is greatly misplaced. Yeah. <laughs> the double Dunaway. Is double Dunaway. Call that. The DD. Okay. DD. All, all right, right uh, Brian, uh, I asked Jeff, as the series opens, we find James Holden serving on what ship? So now, I believe things out on the Rosinante. Which ship was he serving on? I'll tell you this: I've never watched or read any Expanse stuff. You should. <laughs> it's really good. You're missing so out. Yeah. I'm going absolutely. So I am going to uh, uh, wish greatly that he knows this one. I okay. believe he does. I'll bet he knows this one. All right. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what you say, Scott, but. <laughs> yeah, who cares what I say? You're what both else? saying that he's got this uh, brain. Brain is the vote that counts. Let's hear what he says. Oh, that would be the Canterbury Ice Hauler uh, exactly run right. by Pure and Clean. <laughs> wow. Oh, man, you're going to be so good at these. <laughs> <laughs> little, little bonus. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good. It uh, gives you a yeah. pretty good idea. Uh, I mean, he's identifying uh, captains and things like that. So great. Okay, Brian gets a point, which Woo. means uh, the next question goes over to Scott. Uh, Scott, I asked Jeff, what is the name of Bobby Draper's nephew, whose relationship oh. with Lily leads to her recruitment to work with Isai Martin? Oh, geez. Later in the books, um, and the series, and the series. Yep. Uh. I uh, I think he'll I think he'll know that too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's find out. Oh man. <sighs> uh oh. Uh okay, this one you've got me on. Because I'm gonna recognize it when you say it, but nothing is coming to me. Not even a guess. And no, not even a guess, because okay. the, the the bad thing with this is that in the books they've drawn from one of the novellas not from the main books oh so okay yeah this is um the the novella comes from is something called the gods of gods of risk okay but i can't i can't remember his name you get bonus points for knowing david draper david yeah okay Okay. actually david doesn't even ring a bell but (laughs) yeah yeah no okay it does for me the last season the before this one they dealt with this david kid they certainly did yes yeah. uh yeah david draper uh correct uh and unfortunately jeff got it wrong point goes to brian but that means you still keep control of the game scott okay. uh i asked jeff what is the full name of the private eye who reoccurs in the form of the investigator the full name the full name first and last name um he'll know that yeah <laughs> he'll know that as long as there's no middle okay. name i can't think of right now i think he'll know that all right let's see how he did uh, I don't know if he has a middle name, but his first and last name are Josephus Miller. Josephus Miller is yeah. exactly what I have here. All right. Middle name Josephus. Yeah. That's right. Played by uh, the brilliant uh, uh, dude what played Punisher. His name is all of a sudden escaping. Yeah. Hung. It's played by Hung. I can't think of his name. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I love him, though. <laughs> he was also, also in Hung. Yeah. Yes. Can't uh, think of his name. He's fantastic, though. And also is that is one of the great uh, modern characters written he's that's he's an amazing character it's really good for sure yeah all right good job oh yeah thomas, thomas jane. jane thank you here we go <clears throat> all right uh you still have control it's two to one scott so i asked uh, jeff maneo jung espinoza activates the ring gates while pursuing a record in what activity did he know oh, yeah he'll know that because it's also a, it's referential to the first book and first season so yes i think you'll know that okay all right, let's see how he did. Oh. Okay, he is it's a not it's a gravity assisted uh 
uh, spaceship flight. So it's, and I think they're called slingshotters. Ah, yes, yeah, slingshot racing. Oh. Oh. The slingshot was the word I was looking for. Well done. <laughs> All right. Oof. Very good, Scott. Tied things up. Two, two. Okay. We got ourselves a game here. Yeah. Uh, all right. This is going to go to Brian. Uh, because, oh, hi. Uh, uh, tie, once we tie things up, it goes to the other player. Yeah. Uh, I asked Jeff, what is the name of the Earth Mining Corporation chartered by the United Nations to explore New Terra, a.k.a. Illus? Hmm. Well, I don't know that. But I think he does. Okay, let's see if he knows. Here is his response. Oh, 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 oh no. I, oh, I'm going to kick myself when you tell me what it is. Um, Royal Charter Energy? That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, he, he didn't think he knew it, fell into it. Ah. That Royal Charter Energy. Three points for Brian, two for Scott. This goes back to Scott. Okay. Uh, as one of the best pirates in the belt, Clay's Ashford earned what nickname? Played by uh, Stratheran. Yeah, he's so Great good. Character. Uh, but does he know the nickname that he earned? Yeah. No. He's yeah, a really see. awesome character. Yeah. That Pretty memorable stuff, so I'll say oh. yeah. I'll give Jeff the chance right. here to say yes. Let's hear how he did. Um, uh, yeah. Loved him in that. Because this isn't a book thing either, and I uh, and they the don't series. mention... Excuses yeah, right off the bat. I, at least I don't think it is. <laughs> because Ashford's character is very different. The way they... They do it. They take his character and make him somebody else. Mm -hmm. But both of the characters from the... It's weird. Both characters from the book are both in the show, but they've swapped personalities. Oh, interesting. Okay. The names, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the Ghost Knife of Callisto. Damn it! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Some, I remember somebody saying that, but I don't... I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think that's in the books. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's funny when I give him the answer. He's like, hmm, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. like, if you say so. Like, yeah. There was no chance of me ever getting that. Wow. Very Jeff Jeff way of handling it. I like it. That's right. All right. So Brian uh, takes the lead four to two. Scott, you need, uh, you need this okay. to keep in the game here. Right. Uh, I asked Jeff, prior to leading the OPA, Fred Johnson, you should get this because he's a, he's a Johnson. Yeah. Fred Johnson held what rank in the United Nations Marine Corps? Oh, he'll know that. That's a huge point of interest, at least in the books. Well, the first couple of books. Uh, yeah, and he's, he seems to be leaning book here, so I'm going to say yes, he knows. Okay, all right, let's see if he knows it. <clears throat> he was the butcher of Anderson Station, and I believe he was a colonel. He was a colonel. Correct. Yep. Ooh, very, ding, good. Ding, ding. very good. Yeah. Still in it. All right. You still in it. Four it. to three, and you still have control. Uh, later renamed the Rosinante, what was the original commissioned name of the ship that Holden uses to escape the Donager? Uh, this is out to you, Scott. Did Jeff know what the original name of the Rosinante was? Some Mars bullshit. Rosinante. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mars bullshit. <laughs> Mars bullshit. Uh, he's going to probably know it. He'll know it. We'll see. Okay. Goes. All right. Let's see if he gets this. The MCRN Ooh. Corvette Tachi. Exactly nice. right. Nice. He even He's knew it was a Corvette. Right off the That's bat. awesome. Yeah, yes. Corvette class. It's awesome. Uh, wow. Tied things up. Tied this, it again. This, this is the question that will uh, decide the fate. And I don't the, like it. It's too much pressure. In the game playing, if, if a kid is going to get to play any games this week. Yep. Or if My she Thursday just has will to be hell. And, we watched the Oprah interview with the Royals. Let's see how uh, what your prediction is. Uh, I asked Jeff, the development of what fusion reaction engine led to a joint effort by Mars and Earth to colonize the belt? Huh? <laughs> That's right. The development of what fusion reaction engine led to a joint effort be, uh, by Mars and Earth to colonize the belt? Did, uh... This doesn't feel like something anyone would know, but... I don't know if it's the book or the movie. I don't, or the TV. Jeff knows it. 
<laughs> I think you're, oh, you're, 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 you're right to choose that. I think he's going to know this. That's a Let's huge. Let's hear part what of he says. Story. Yeah. What I said about the science fiction no! versus science fantasy, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the Epstein drive. And the way they show it, portrayed of how it got developed, is, I think, one of the highlights of the series. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely correct, by the way, of course. Yeah. Well done! Yeah. Yes. Uh, good, fought, good fought game. That gives the point to Brian and... Uh, Kit London was correct. Winner, winner, yes. chicken dinner. Kit, how do you feel about that? You picked your, you picked your grave hunter keeper guy to mm -hmm. win. How'd that go? Grave hunter you feel, keeper. You feel mm -hmm. good? I, I feel great, and I also have TWBD um, tea coming from Gwen today, so I'm excited oh, to try it out. I picked ooh, the cinnamon. Right today, God, I'm with you oh, if you got cinnamon. cinnamon, yeah, get cinnamon. Whatever you do, whatever it is, doesn't matter to me. If like someone said to me, do you want a steak or a steak with some cinnamon? I'd take the steak <laughs> with cinnamon. Sure. Absolutely. I don't even know what that Every means. Time. Yeah, it's so good. Anyway, don't do the challenge, though. That's rough stuff. My brother tried, and it about killed him. about choked to death on it. So don't do the cinnamon challenge. Anyway, uh, well done. Congratulations. You know the drill. Just send Brian an email, coverville at gmail.com, and you will walk away the happy winner of these codes today. Congratulations, Kit. We're proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye now. Thank you, Kit. All right. Well done. Well, Brian. Good job, both of you, by the way, on getting all those. Yeah, it's great. I didn't know, I don't know why I didn't know this, but I didn't know Jeff was such a freak about the expanse. I had no idea. I didn't either until he emailed me and he said, Hey, I'm a freak about knowledge. the expanse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's really Know your freak. He knows that's his stuff. Right. And uh well and, should he, because that's a fantastic series and series of books. If you haven't read them or watched it, you're all insane. Uh, Brian right. Dunaway. If you're a freak about something, if, mm -hmm. uh, listening, uh, if you're if you're a patron and a TMS patron and a freak about something, please email me coverville@gmail.com and let me know what your nerd is, and we'll see about getting you onto a, an episode of this. Yeah, that'd be totally fun. I love these; these are great. Uh, Dunaway, always good to have you. Of course, tomorrow you and I will be doing the Boop Show, three thirty Mountain Time, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to talk about a game, dude. Holy! Oh, goodness. I gotta talk about a game. I gotta talk about Curse of the Dead God. Whoa, that's a oh, that game's great. You know <laughs> yes. what? You'll find that I sp I talked about that game on Boop like a year and a half ago in early access, but I'm excited to hear your take on it now that it's fully out. I'm gonna talk about it since it came out. Yeah, it's 1.0 now. It's great. That's a very mm -hmm. cool game. Also, we got stuff, and uh, we love the indies. So we're talking about indies. That's what happens on there. So check it out live, 3.30 Mountain Time, The Boop Show at frogpants.com slash B-O-O-P. Brian, anything else you want to say? Curses! Curses. Well, you won. You, you did good today. You're no, all, yeah. curses is the game. Every oh. time I get cursed, I'm like, curses! Oh, curses. Curses, you curse. Bye. All right. <laughs> Such a dork. He's talking about a very good game, though. So I will give Oh, him. a game called Curses? It's called Curse of the Dead Gods. And uh, okay. it's very good. It's a very good game. All right, uh, Brian, we've done it, and we're yes, actually sir. making decent time, so I am going to do a little bit of this. Good morning, good morning, everybody in the news this morning, good morning. Let's do a little bit of news brought to you by... Brought to you by Soundography. Ham and I are taking a week off from releasing the show, but we're in the process of listening to... This is why it's taking us two weeks. Uh, hair metal from 1981 to 1991, 10 years, a decade of hair metal. Ham and I are going to be discussing some of the big names in there. Of course, uh, your your Def Leppard, your Motley Crue, your Striper, your Lita Ford, your uh, uh, those all those Warrant. Uh, <laughs> oh, Warrant, sweet. Warrant, all right, I was I wasn't in, I wasn't in until just then when you said Warrant. Now I'm in. That was the that was the tipping point. Was yeah. hearing that we were going to talk about that song Cherry Pie. Yeah, pretty uh, by exciting. Warrant or. Uh, uh, one of my favorite people to talk about is uh, Winger, good old Kip Winger. Yeah, yeah, Winger, <laughs> Winger, Warrant, anyway. all of it. Yeah, it's great. That's right. So hair metal uh, coming up next week on uh, Soundography. Take a week off. Nice, I like it. Uh, we got a, we got some important news coming out of Japan and China. Okay, let's say mm -hmm. Asia, where apparently Russia isn't anymore. Uh, this is what it says. <laughs> Japan down. asked China to stop performing anal swab tests for COVID on its citizens. The Japanese citizens yeah. keep traveling there for business or whatever, and the Chinese are like, come here and give us your anus, and then they test it with a swab. Drop, ah. drop your pants. Let's see if you've got the COVID. Yep. And the Japanese are saying, stop it. Uh, the government has asked China to stop imposing anal swab tests for COVID-19 on their citizens. Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsubanubu Kato, I'm mm -hmm. sure is correct, Said the government yeah. has not received a response from officials in Beijing yet about whether they will change the testing procedure. Mr. Kato said Japan would continue to ask China 
to alter the way testing be, uh, or alter the way of testing because of the damage it causes to those who have to undergo the procedure. Uh, he says the practice quote has not been confirmed to be effective anywhere else in the world unquote. Some Japanese uh, reported to our embassy in China that they received anal swab tests, which cause a great deal of psychological pain. And also, you know, you do it wrong, you might get a little bit of the bum pain too. I think. Well, that and and uh, they weren't doing a good job of keeping track of which swabs were for the bum and which ones were for the nose. So, uh, <laughs> you know, things got confusing. The the Chinese character for anal yeah. uh, versus nasal is very very similar. It's very just close. a little tiny uh, line yeah. that's different. You're off by one digit, and you forget it. The whole thing that's is right. shot. Exactly. Yes. Well. Uh, here in China, we use the whole swab, they like to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why they're doing that, because it is not it is not seen or... It's unnecessary, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the nose is... We've determined that the nose is fine. Spit tests are fine. Yeah. We certainly don't need to go to uh, those kind of lengths yeah. to check COVID. I mean, having been in China and having been through what I already consider kind of brutal customs agents and things there, mm-hmm. like it was hard mm-hmm. getting in and out of Hong Kong. I hated it. If they added this to the list, I don't think I'd ever go to China again. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you. Like this would, if we found out that they were doing this kind of test when we went to Ireland, I think we'd start looking at other options, mm-hmm. other travel options. Yeah. Get over here, pull down your pants and get ready for a swab. Arr. Exactly, yes. Uh, all right. Can right hamburg- between the Blarney Stones. <laughs> You'll have to figure out where that is, everybody. <laughs> That's right. Use exactly. your imagination. Here's a story about hamburger buns and whether they can save your pipes from freezing. Yeah, that's right. The previous weather situation or recent weather situation in Texas has been a terrible disaster. Cold temperatures along with loss of power meant that many people have been stuck inside their homes with no heat. On top of that, most of the houses and buildings in Texas, Texas are not designed to ex- uh, for extended periods of below freezing temperatures. This means that there have been many frozen and broken water pipes. That is bad. Having had a broken water pipe in my lifetime, I can tell you mm-hmm. it's horrendous. And they don't bury their pipes yeah. very deep or insulate them very well down there because they don't need to. They don't really don't have this kind of problem. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's the deal. Uh, everyone tries to make things work the best they can. Uh, there's photos. There was a photo that was making the rounds on Twitter, which uh, data and social scientist Ruman Chowdhury Uh, snapped this photo outside of a fast food restaurant in the Houston suburbs where some clever person had apparently attempted uh, using a bunch of hamburger buns to insulate the pipe. Well, there you go. So just like your Chinese uh, COVID swab, you just put your pipe right between the buns. Yeah, you put the pipe between the buns, and Mm -hmm. that's your third date. Uh, It says here, uh, we live in a world of uh, H2O. There's water. uh, That's water with a gas. Or what? There's water. I'm sorry. There's water. As a as gas, water vapor. This is wired just wired.com just chewing up the internet with their really hey, we got gotcha. you. Now we're gonna just explain <laughs> water to you. Yeah, they and they go on to say why it would break and everything else. But this guy put buns on there. That's cool. Yeah. Good job, there, smart. man. Let's see if I can show the chat room this photo. When life gives you lemons, use hamburger buns. Yeah, use the buns. Here's a photo for you. Those are the kinds of buns, but uh, here's the actual You think one. it works better with sesame seeds or without? Uh I'm gonna say without. Wouldn't you think? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, it seems right to me. There you go. See that? <laughs> we just jammed it full of hamburger buns. Pretty smart. Pretty smart. Perfect. Well done. Well also, done. those buns, I've eaten enough McDonald's buns to know that they don't decay, so they'll stay there forever. That's They're in there for good. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah. The, uh, the tape will last uh, l- less time than the buns that uh, it's holding on. Yes. We're grateful to Ruman Chowdhury for his photo. Thank you, Ruman Chowdhury. Nothing wrong with his name, just, you know, pointing it out. No. It's got a weird name. That's a normal Houston name, if I ever heard one. Yeah, if I've ever heard a Houston name, that's one of them. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll spend some time with Bill. we got a question from a listener for him. Uh, We're loving these. Keep these coming, everybody. We love these questions for our Maker segment. And then, of course, a major spoilers after that. We'll talk a little bit about whether San Diego Comic-Con is a no-show this year or not. Uh, we have some thoughts on that. Maybe a little WandaVision wrap up as well. So come on back for all that in a moment after Brian plays this song. Excellent. Well, speaking of Ireland, uh, got an email from Yogan Moylan, who is one half of the indie duo known as the new Ravis or Ravis from Galway. Uh, they, you know, had a big 2019 tour plan, 2020, of course. And, uh, 
stuff fell through as we all know so he's they're they're both really excited to get back into venues to perform for audiences in the meantime they recorded this um kind of in response to covid great song here here's the new ravis with a brand new single the city's coming down now all of a sudden i heard a big boom i looked back out my door and the electric pole fell and the lines were falling and there's a guy come out screaming and squalling running around about like a chicken with his head cut off i told him he need to get out of that water but say i didn't know he was getting eat up a bees i thought he was just high what is it about chocolate that makes us smile This is the Morning Stream with Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett. Bonsai! All right, we're back, everybody. Welcome back to the show. The gear in the chat's like, I can tell you right now there's no SDCC because I already, they already announced it. I know, we were doing a teaser. It's a <laughs> teaser. <laughs> it's a teaser, man. We're trying to tease. Jeez. We're teasing it. Yeah, well, thank you. Know, do you do you, you answer the uh, the television news crew as well when they say, what three things in your bathroom will kill you before you know it? Yeah, and then so, come well, back and you have the, to wait until the toilet 15. paper, the Listerine, <laughs> and the Crest. Duh. But only when used at the same time. Those Together, yes. Yeah, that's the only time it's really a problem. All right. Uh, let's get Bill in. Let's do it. Let's sure. stick Bill in it. Let's make him uh, put a little bill in it. We liked it, so we're going to put a bill in it. Yeah, we're going to put a bill on it because we liked it, so we put a bill on it. Oh, wait, he has to. I have to play his thing, though. Hold on, here it is. Your bat cave's open there, Bill. Yes, that's right, signifying the first guest of the week. Uh, that sound means that Bill Duran is here from his maker shop all the way up in Seattle, Washington, where he makes all kinds of stuff, comes on here and gives us cool advice about the world of makers. Bill, welcome back to the show. Hello. Hi. Good to be here. Yeah, it's good to have um, you here, man. How are you? Good. I want to dive into the question that you had. But first, super quick, we yeah. just put up a video on YouTube. Last week, I made a prop from Highlander, and I wasn't done talking about Highlander, so we put up another video where I talk <laughs> about Highlander some more. Oh, so if you're into nice. Highlander and you haven't got enough from me, we got a new video up. So did It's the just me talking about my swords. Did, did that movie have... That movie just had like some kind of anniversary or something, right? Because I saw... There's all sorts of stuff being posted about Highlander, and it wasn't just you. Uh, Clancy Brown put up a big post on Twitter about his uh, role as the Kurrigan. And... Uh, well, yeah, March 7th, 1986 was its release date. So yesterday would have been its... Uh, oh, 35 years. 35 year 35 anniversary. Year. Yeah. Okay, so that must be it. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, big anniversary for for uh, oh, right. for the only good Highlander movie. Anyway, <laughs> why wasn't why wasn't I following Clancy Brown on Twitter? Yeah, what's he your deal? Posted a bunch of pictures from this. Yeah, look ah! at him. Look at him dude, standing oh. by his car, dude. He looks like a freaking badass. He's so cool back then. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then him in his Kurgan outfit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did All I right. say Kurgan. Follow that guy. Kurgan. That's what I meant. <laughs> Kerrigan. <laughs> Nancy Kerrigan. Um, anyway, Nancy Kerrigan. <clears throat> it's good to have you here. Uh, we do get questions from folks at home, and uh, I would like to put the email address out one more time just for, to remind people. If you've got a question for Bill and how he does stuff, uh, or questions about, you know, or maybe you heard him say a thing and you have a better idea, whatever, we don't care, themorningstream at gmail.com and let us know, like this one from Brent K. from Missouri. Right? M-O, Missouri. Yeah. Uh, he says, hi, Scott, Brian, and Bill. I have a question for Bill today. Any tips on how to keep organized with all the little bits and bobs and parts that you have around or you need around for various builds? I have tables covered in crap and no great way to sift through it. Do you have some miracle advice for those of us who are less prone to organization when doing our builds? Thanks, Brent K. from Missouri. Uh, this seems like a good one and one I could benefit from, even though I have a different disorganization problem, but, you know, probably some advice for everybody here. So what would you say? Bill? Absolutely. Yes. So if you are in any way a maker of things, then keeping those tools and materials and the finished things that you make organized is a lifelong pursuit. You will never be done with it. Okay. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you could try, but it's not going to happen. Yes. So just keep in mind. You will perpetually acquire more things. Mm. Very, it's very unlikely that the older I get, the less stuff I will have. Mm. It's very much the other way around. Mm. 
Uh, the philosophy you have towards organizing all of those things will change over time. So, for example, I have been a lifelong maker, but the past decade or so, I've taken it pretty seriously, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So, uh, I've acquired a lot of stuff. Some may say a staggering amount of stuff. They would be right. Uh, I've moved workshops a couple of times. So, I started in a living room, then I moved to a two-car garage, then a basement, and now I'm in a 2,300-square-foot warehouse, and I don't know what's next. So, like, the, the, the setting for all of this stuff changes over time. Right. That means your approach towards organizing it will change over time as well. Mm. So here are a handful of things that I consider as I ponder my organization scheme. And I do that like every once in a while. I'll be in my shop and I'll pause and I'll stroke my beard and I'll look around and go, <laughs> hmm, yeah. I should build some new shelves <laughs> or... I should take all of that stuff and put it over there. That definitely makes better sense. <laughs> mm. Do you ever feel like it's, uh, uh, before you get to these actual tips, do you ever feel like it's like professional hoarding almost? Because you just, you love the stuff you have, right? You, you don't want to get rid I of, feel, of it. Yeah, I feel like if, if it was a lot less organized, then it would be very difficult to tell the difference between my workshop and and the house of a hoarder. <laughs> the, <laughs> the organization is kind of the, the amount of stuff doesn't matter the state of this stuff does yeah yeah no i understand <laughs> and whether or not you can get the thing you want when you need it that's right because the whole point about. of having yeah. the stuff we're talking about here is that you need that little size screw or that clamp or that paint yeah, thing yeah. or whatever and if you can't reach it or can't get to it then what's the point of having it mm -hmm. yeah. so here here's a handful of things one uh the first thing when it comes to drawers and putting stuff in the drawers giving an entire drawer to one tool is a bit much, right? Mm. However, the opposite, one drawer with all of your tools in it is equally useless. Mm. So there's a happy spot for every tool that you have. So if you have a drawer that's too full to be useful, take some of that stuff out. And if you have tools that are more used than others, give them a dedicated place in your shop. They're special. You use them all the time. <laughs> uh, so, for example, I have a magnet strip over my main workbench that's got, like, the X-Acto knives I use, a couple of screwdrivers I use, um, uh, a whole bunch of little doodads. Mm. It just They're right there, right in front of me when I need them. They don't live in a drawer. Sure. Um, the, the most used rotary tool bits that I have live on a magnet strip next to the rotary tool. But the hundreds of spare bits that I have, they go in a Sortimo case. It's labeled and everything. I know where it is. So if I have to get it, I can go find it. Mm. But the bulk of those things stay tucked away somewhere. Mm. Uh, this one, man, two things. The first one is everything has a place. And it goes back to that place before the end of the day. right? And that doesn't just mean tools. Your materials, molds, paints everything at the end of your work whatever you're doing productive that day everything goes back mm -hmm. unless you're going to use it the next day in which case i like to like organize it on my workbench so that when i come in the, ne the next day everything i need is right there so everything goes back in its place and it has a place right that's critical but then also tidying up as you work has changed my workflow dramatically over the past couple of years. And uh, I really started doing it after I read Adam Savage's book, Every Tool's a Hammer. He talks a lot about, <laughs> you know, organizing all your, your stuff and being productive and coming up with a workshop philosophy. So I recommend, obviously, reading that book, too. The biggest takeaway I think I had was that I, I'm constantly... Like if I'm waiting for uh, a bit of glue to dry, it's going to take 10 seconds for the super glue to dry. I take a minute and I just tidy up my workbench right kind of line everything up knoll everything and if i notice stuff that doesn't need to be used anymore i pick it up and I put it away and it, that means at the end of the day when it's time to tidy up i'm basically already done and everything's yeah. been put back in its place it takes so much discipline to do that it, though <laughs> it does you have to do it every single time and i'm so yeah. prone to getting in the zone and building something and then you look up after a couple hours and actually here here's the here's the scenario you start a project and you go, this one, I'm going to be tidy. I'm going to be so tidy. We'll mm -hmm. put everything where it needs to go. Two hours later, you look up and every tool that you own is on your workbench. <laughs> it's overflowing. There's no space to put any. 
that's what you're fighting against constantly. Mm, yeah. So it's that every 20 minutes or so, I just take a look around the, my workbench and say, what can I tidy up? What can I put away? Um, that has changed everything. Uh, and then when it comes to organizing small stuff or anything, some kind of container system needs to be implemented. So we have these larger plastic bins that come in a variety of sizes. They're see-through, so I can see what's in those plastic bins when they're up on the shelf. We use that for all sorts of stuff, like all of my Tamiya brand paints go in one of those. All of my Allclad brand paints go in another one. Oh, interesting. And Separate so by brand. That's I wouldn't have thought yeah. of that. Yeah. And then, well, I have enough of every single brand of paint to do that. <laughs> Other people might not. Maybe all of your acrylic paints go in one container. Maybe all your lacquers go in another container, that sort of thing. But having a system is what's critical. What that system is is kind of up to you. Yeah, you can, uh, and, you can take advice from other people, but it feels like you're going to have to, whatever you do, it's going to be structured around what you do and not, that's mm -hmm. never going to be the same, right? Everyone's different the way to do it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No one has the same set of stuff that I do. All right. Uh, and then for smaller things, small part organization and storage, I use Sortimo cases. I've talked about them before. Um, you can get similar cheaper ones from Stanley and other companies. Uh, but the idea is it's a large briefcase size container and in it are a bunch of smaller containers where you can put nuts and bolts and other little things. Mm -hmm. And each different one gets its own container and it gets labeled. The, the, to wrap this whole thing up, label everything. Labels. So I bought a dedicated label maker. It was like 60 bucks. Brother makes it. It's totally fine. You type in a little thing and it prints out a perfect little label. And everything in my shop is covered in them. So not only can I find the stuff I need when I need to, but if someone else came into my shop to do something, they could just look at the the uh, wall of paint containers and grab the paint that they want. Or they can look at my Sortimo case and within moments get exactly the screws they need. Mm. Uh, which help, it helps me, it helps other people label everything. You don't need a label maker. You can get a whiteout marker or something. Those are really good. That's what I was going to uh, ask if you had any like oh, yeah. I picture you with a little make walking around with that label maker thing and you know squeezing it and doing your letters and everything but you could print out. <laughs> you could print labels. You could do whatever you you know whatever feels good I guess right? Oh yeah yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah I have um actually I bought one of those old school like vinyl squeezy label makers. Oh yeah you know? the ones that presses the letter through the black tape. Yes. I so I got this. that. Yeah. I had to buy one specifically to label my um Ghostbusters um uh, PKE meter. Oh yeah. Yeah, you'd want you'd want that for your uh um your uh back to the future DeLorean oh, yeah. thing as well. Yes. Yeah, I don't actually use it to label things in my shop. I got that only for a handful of props that needed mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the label maker that I use in the shop is like an electronic one with a screen and a keyboard. Oh, and nice. A fancy yeah, pants, nice. new one. Yeah, I made the mistake of getting a Bluetooth one that like you can type out your labels on your phone. This thing never keeps its connection. It says, oh, uh, pairing? Okay, I'm pairing, all right. And I get some labels out and then like two weeks later, I need to print up some labels. And uh, do you have a printer? Uh, let me pair with it. No, <laughs> just give me is my it, old one back. I give it to Tristan. I want it back. Yeah. Is your is your printer uh, low on uh, cyan? Guess what? You can't scan anything. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's how they get you, dude. They're like, hey, this thing's only fifty Plus, bucks. Yours? It's black and white. I mean, it's a little it's a little black and white um, Dymo oh, Bluetooth yeah, yeah. labeler, but it's still a pain in the butt. Yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Well, label everything in your life. That's my that's my final bit of advice for organization. But really, it comes down to you working in your shop a lot and discovering what your system is going to be. Right. Do you have any, try lots of stuff. Do you have any tricks for when you you go out there and you're like, when you see something becoming a problem, right? Like it's just a little mm -hmm. overwhelming, and you know you've got like eight projects to do, and they're all going to be more fun than this. Like, what's your motivating factor? What what tells you to say, nope, I need to take this half an hour and do this thing so that down the road I'm more organized and I know where that part mm -hmm. is or I know where that tool is. Like, what do you use for your own personal mojo when that comes around? Um, this is something I know that Adam does a lot. Um, when I'm working on another project and I hit a roadblock, mm -hmm. instead of stopping, I will switch gears and work on shop infrastructure. Um, that way I, my head is working on the problem in the background. I'm still being productive 
and I'm not dwelling on the thing I can't finish right now. You know, right. I'm still working on something. So it's not that I look for time to work on shop infrastructure. It's when I have something else I don't want to work on right now. I'll say, hey, let's go. Yeah. Let's go sort all my taps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fun. It's great. It's like it's it's almost mindless. I can zone out for like half an hour while I sort through stuff and make labels. Um, and then a lot of times my brain will be like, oh, a thing you were working on? Got it. They're like, okay, cool. I can put this stuff aside and go finish that project. Nice. So cool. yeah, it's 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 an uh, tool or, or shop organization is an ongoing thing and it should pop up every once in a while. And I think that if people just look for opportunities when you're waiting for glue to dry, you know, oh, it's got to take two hours for that, uh, that, that marine grade uh, epoxy to cure. Two hours. Well, why don't I just spend that two hours cleaning the shop? Mm -hmm. Why don't I do that? Yeah. Cool. And then I'm not trying to pick the thing up before it's dried or whatever. Yeah, that's a good so idea. Look for opportunities like that. Yeah, and Brian, Brian and I were, you know, we obviously aren't running shops. Although Brian, Brian's enough stuff going on with like 3D printing. The 3D printing, almost, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually do use a, a similar thing, the the briefcase thing you described from uh, Harbor Freight. Super cheap. Mm -hmm. These Harbor Freight little divider cases. Do I have a Harbor Freight here? I think I do. Don't I? Don't I? Hold on. Is that a thing everyone's got? And I just haven't been there because I'm I don't know. Here. I mean, I know they're. I know that they're all around the country. I don't know if they're everywhere. That like mm. in every state. But I uh, look. I, I was... zipped in there on Friday to buy a one-ton Arbor press. Oh my lord! <laughs> what did that? What does yeah. that do for you? Tell us what that is. It squishes things with leverage. <laughs> oh, wow! Okay. I was doing some stuff with stamps. So, so like you could do thing. like a really good grilled cheese thing in that. Oh, right? the best! Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh! There are be paper thin they're like 30 <laughs> locations in the wasatch front they're all over the place here grilled cheese tortilla basically is what yeah. yeah they're all over here i, I don't know why i've never yeah. seen one they're everywhere that's a that's like you go into there and it's like oh i could use a box that has 48 tools in it sure and it's 3.99 okay i'll get that and uh yeah floor mats are like five bucks for a case of floor mats i mean it's mm -hmm. if you're if you're getting into doing stuff like the um turning mats into armor that's a really good place to get some prep to, to practice well i need to i need to organize i'm going to harbor freight and finding some stuff yeah oh they have tons of tons of organization stuff that's fantastic mm -hmm. uh all right well this has all been very good uh bill uh anything else going on in or around your world before we let you go today yeah got a great video to share Ooh. uh it's this maker called w and m levsha l-e-v-s-h-a he made a round dice set. This is some machining <laughs> corn right here. Let me tell you, brass wow. and stainless steel. It's gorgeous. Looks he like a, a old timey pencil sharpener is what kinda, that looks like. Kind of does it, but it's it's uh, for rolling two d sixes technically, yeah. but it's not not a four sided or six sided die. It's it's two what? cylinders. It's really that cool. Is so cool. That's mm -hmm. really cool. You roll up to your D and D game with one of those things, people are gonna know you're serious. That is so rad. The only way you get it, like you, people are convinced that it's gonna be uh, uh, accurately random, is if that thing has a good like thirty second spin on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Look at this. I, this is the wow. stuff that really blows my mind the most. That I feel like I'm the least qualified for ever. Like I just, could, I don't know if I could ever do it. I guess if I had the right tools and time. And training <laughs> and I, I, I figured out how to do lead stuff like that you can figure it out too scott it's Think pretty so? pretty easy thing All spins right. you just jam stuff into it until it looks the round in the way you want it to be i guess so. it started off with a uh, stainless steel uh bar like i have here in my hand this thing is <laughs> this thing is like seven pounds of <laughs> solid steel oh yeah look at that dude where'd you get that yeah. what's that from uh from my grandfather's garage when um when he passed away and my grandmother we moved my grandmother to assisted living we had to clean their garage and their house and he had so many tools and things like pinball uh, ball bearings and things like that and i'm like i'm i don't know what i'm going to use it for but i'm taking this stainless steel <laughs> yeah, I cylinder would've, i like would have totally done that this, this, this thing is so that's heavy. rad i love old grandpa's garages were the greatest things on this planet <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. oh man i have memories of all that stuff yeah look at yeah, that how, yeah yeah how heavy how Soup, heavy do to this soup's on is. or fries are done uh all right <laughs> excellent stuff as always go check those guys out and also of course punishprops.com where you'll find all of bill's fine work and his youtube channel as well bill thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you next week yeah
He said, see you the way Justin says it. Freak, freaked me out for a second. Don't like it. <laughs> Thought we had Justin for a second. Huh? Yeah. We don't We don't need two days of Justin. I mean, come on. No. I have to do ANTP. Especially when we get him tonight, too. Yeah. I got to listen to this stuff. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, we got two to listen to this time. It'll be easier. Oh, that's true. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Two teams. Because we're narrowing down the teams. It's mm-hmm. getting, we're getting the eliminations that are happening in rapid we succession are. here. We All right. Are. Here's this, everyone. Enjoy this right here. Steven Schleicher. Steven Schleicher. <laughs> hey, it is Steven Schleicher from uh, Majorspoilers.com. He's uh, based in Hayes, Kansas, but don't let that fool you. He's got a worldwide grasp <laughs> on all things nerd. Uh, Bi- uh, hey, I'm going to call you Bill again. Hello there, Steven. Welcome. Hello, Scott. Hello, Brian. How are you Hello. guys? Good. Good. Doing okay. Um, I guess I, I have to tell you something before we get moving here. Um, you didn't watch WandaVision. No, I did. I'm all good. I, oh, okay. I saw it all. Uh, I uh, we'll talk about that too because I want to talk. We'll we'll save that for the end. But um, I uh, don't know why I like these gimmicky one-off DC things. I've I've gotten so into stuff like um, just or not justified. Uh, uh, un, what's it called? Crap. The, they're based on the games. They're based on the fighting games. Help me. Oh, oh the, Injustice. Uh, Inju- Injustice. Uh, yeah. Injustice. Injustice 1 and yeah. 2. I'm now into the second series, which came years later when the second game came out. And I love those comics. They're so good. I mean, I know they're kind of alternate universe You know, Superman's in trouble. It's it's. They're definitely taking a, a different line. Um, and, and, you know, there's a lot of deaths and things that are, that are clearly not... No one's dead yet <laughs> in, in other continuums <laughs> of the comics and stuff like that. And I know that they're gimmicky. And Deceased, same thing. Deceased is all about zombies. It's so, it should be dumb and like, you know, too pulpy for me, but I love them. So I don't know what that says about me, but I'm so into them right now. I can't stop. Well, I think one of the nice things about it is it does take what you think as going to be, oh, here's another Superman comic or here's another Wonder Woman and Batman thing Mm. and just kind of puts it on its ear so that you say, oh, okay, well, this is a different way of looking at it. Now, some people uh, hate it when comic book creators do that it's like well that's not how superman's supposed to be uh but you know it's it's just something different and go with it you know you'll be back Mm -hmm. your regular superman before you know it yeah that's kind of where i'm at i'm really enjoying it and uh can't say enough about some of the writing and art it's just it's not throwaway like it should be it should be gimmicky garbage and it's not it's like well made and and funny Mm -hmm. and 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 kind of stark and interesting and a lot of what ifs and and i like what ifs i like messing around with what ifs in my comics so it's a good time, and uh, if you if you have that DC Infinite thing, it's all in there. So go check it out. Yeah, uh, Comic Con. Are we getting one? We're not, are we? It's not happening. Well, so last year, San Diego Comic Con, the in person event was canceled because of the uh, the COVID nineteen. Pretty smart choice, I think. Uh, you know that was the wise decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this year, we've come around, and San Diego has said, or Comic Con International has said, you know what? Uh, we are not confident enough that everyone is going to be inoculated or that we're going to have um, enough safety protocols in place. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this year's July event virtual again. Mm. But if everything goes well, we may have an in-person event in San Diego in November of 2021. Oh, Oh, interesting. Okay, Okay, so yeah, still leaving it open for a possible later event in the year. Yeah, and... I don't know. I was not super thrilled with how the virtual event went last year. Um, now, granted, they had like 15,000 people watching per panel mm-hmm. um, that they had, and that's that's really good. Mm. Uh, but when you compare a month later when DC did their DC Fandom event, they had something like 22 million people watching uh, the event over a 24-hour period. So yeah. um, one thing I would like to see Comic-Con International do is kind of step up how they're doing those virtual events instead of just your average zoom meeting where five minutes are spent going can you hear me can you hear me can you hear me <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff yeah because i think that would be a lot better they now need, here's the thing need to hire podcasters and streamers like us because we actually know how that shit works and exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now here's the important thing if you had comic-con international tickets for last year san diego comic-con tickets from last year you had the option of rolling it over to this summer's event well oh. because this summer's event has now been canceled or postponed you have the option of either taking that ticket and rolling it to the November event if it happens, or you can take your 2020 San Diego Comic-Con ticket and roll it over to the July 22 convention. Interesting. 
That's yeah. kind of cool that they're doing that, giving you an option at least, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they want to make sure that people don't feel like they've flushed their $130 or whatever those tickets are down the toilet. Yeah, I get that. Those are expensive, so. And that's that's on the low end, right? Like, is, are, they're, mm-hmm. they're, like the, the full three-day whatever is, like, outrageous. Way it's like, more oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all your Now, money. on the other hand, you know, Wizard World, which does a bunch of conventions as well, they're doubling down on the virtual events. In fact, they launched a whole a whole new lineup of like ticketed virtual events that uh, go beyond just pop culture stuff. They're getting into like woodworking stuff and race car stuff and music stuff. Uh, they're they're They see the future of virtual conventions and that's what they're going to stake their claim on going forward. There's a bunch of that happening in games. Uh, the mm-hmm. gaming you know world is 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 quickly i mean they were, this was already happening and maybe a slower rate uh but e3 was getting less and less relevant and bigger companies like sony and others have started pulling out of those events anyway um and then COVID hit and they're like well okay well let's just accelerate our plans here and just do a digital you know first thing and we'll and we'll get all the eyeballs we wanted and we don't need this anymore like I, mm-hmm. I honestly, I, they, they, when things get back to normal and they can hold actual events, I think that'll happen. But it will be more like, hey, Sony's having an event, or Microsoft's having an event, or whatever. We don't, we no longer need an association to bring them all together for E3, despite the whatever grand tradition people feel about it. Um, that's changing, so uh, yeah. it doesn't surprise and me to hear that. Here's my hope, especially with San Diego Comic Con, is that yes, there is something special about going to an in-person event, whether that's Nerdtacular or whether that's San Diego Comic-Con. Being there is really, really cool. The thing that would be a little bit more inclusive for people who can't go, you know, the uh, convention center only has a 130,000 participant, um, you know, max capacity. Uh, It would be great if San Diego learned something from uh, this COVID time and said, hey, maybe we need to look at investing and streaming our non-Hall H panels to the rest of the world for people who can't attend. I still think people will go in droves to go and get the exclusive merch, to meet their favorite creators, etc. But for some of us who want to sit and, and watch a, a, a particular panel, being able to tune in at a, spe- a specific time over that three-day period to watch it on YouTube and watch it stream, I think would be a, a great thing for these conventions to start doing. Yep. Just in general, COVID out of the equation, just that stuff in general makes sense. We have the technology, we're at a place where we can do it, and you're going to get more eyeballs this way anyway. Uh, yeah, we're just we're just nearing a new thing. Now, San Diego's got this special thing, though, right? Like where it's like, where else are you going to get massive cosplay stuff or, you know, all that well, sort I of mean, thing? Well, I mean... Uh, I, I don't know. I would go to the Anaheim Convention, the Emerald City Comic Con, the New York Comic Con, all these... I mean all these other conventions are doing a lot of the same things that San Diego Comic-Con does. The biggest thing that San Diego has over most of the rest though, are the media stuff yeah. uh, because they're just down the road from Hollywood. It's easy to either train a uh, you know, bus or fly people in to be on those panels for an afternoon and then get them the heck out of San Diego. And that that's, what's packing those panels. Yeah. 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 Miravina in the chat saying BlizzCon should be both live and virtual. No, they do that every year. They've had they've mm-hmm. had they've had that for a couple yeah. of years. They literally right? have like, something like, called oh, the virtual six ticket. or seven years, something like that. Yeah. Even longer than that. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. You pay yeah. for it and you get you know you get every panel, everything, every whatever. It used uh, to be tied in with Direct TV, like you could pay I for. I remember uh, that. Yeah. 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 One year, I think they did that. I don't know if it mm-hmm. didn't work out or what the deal was, but yeah. But these days, they just stream it all on their site. But doing uh, their own. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, <laughs> no, yes, they didn't do both this year, JC Calhoun. We are aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh well anyway this is uh it's an interesting world to see these changes come to but i mean my argument is this just accelerated those changes they were already kind of happening they were beginning and uh, mm-hmm. we'll see how it shakes out in the end let's talk a little bit about the end of wandavision now i'm not sure how any series could ever satisfy everybody in terms of the way it lands its uh, finale but well, um, if you follow Twitter, you certainly know that's a that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you I can't please to, everybody. I tried to avoid well, all that because screw that. Yeah. But uh, I really enjoyed the run. I think the final episode crammed a lot of stuff into a small space, and mm-hmm. um, that was that was that's hard. That's always hard to do and hard to pull off properly. So I think they maybe could have used a little bit more time for the entire series. Really, maybe go twelve episodes. Maybe twelve or, episodes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. However. Uh, I have no regrets about the trip I took. I really enjoyed all. all of it. And uh, 
I, I, I'm, I'm on the other side of it thinking that we have not given Paul Bettany enough respect over the last, his whole career. He's so great. He's he so is. He brings such a level of gravitas to a character that's kind of goofball, you know, like, Mm-hmm. Especially the way they portray it in this, but you know the vision. You've seen the collar in the '70s comics, like you know what's mm-hmm. going on. That mm-hmm. thing's terrible. Yeah. Like, there's no way to, to really do that well for for TV, yeah. for sure. And I really liked it. I liked the whole. I don't know if this is maybe it's spoilery, but the the stuff with the albino version of him. I don't know what he's called in the comics. You guys would know because you're white vision. Him. I don't know. Yeah, like I mean he's ghost just vision, vision. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, ghost vision. Mm-hmm. That was really really cool. Double <laughs> vision. Yeah, double vision, <laughs> which I put, I did this I, on Twitter. I wrote double vision and that was it. No context, total subtweet. And oh, okay. other people going, oh, it's the worst. Whenever I get it, I have a kid. I'm like, no, no, you missed my subtle joke. It's about two, two visions. <laughs> they, thought, they thought you were. Uh, like I was having yeah. double vision. Yeah. Right, that's right, how, right. That's yes, how that's I like to announce my ailments. Uh, ankle hurts or yes. ingrown toenails. Scott uses Twitter it. as WebMD. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but anyway, I really enjoyed it. Ibit, did you feel good by the end? I mean, I, I, did, I did too. Yeah, I was. It's funny because I have a, a buddy who was also really into it, and we went to trivia Thursday night. And he's saying, "So, uh, what do you think happened?" Like, I guess this probably would be if you haven't gotten off because you're worried about spoilers. Now would be a good time. Although I'm not going to go into too much detail. But he's saying, oh, no, I think there's still going to be a big bad. Like, this is the night before the episode was released. I think there's still going to be a bigger bad. And I'm thinking, no, we would have gotten that maybe in the next to last episode. We wouldn't introduce a big bad in the very last episode just to have right that get resolved in the last episode as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he also Especially said... Especially when well, this was a finite series, right? Yeah. Exactly. He also said, well, what happens to the kids? What happens to Vision? And I pretty much told him my prediction, which was accurately what happened in the last episode and i think you can go to like so many different people's youtubes where they had all these outlandish predictions like oh Mm -hmm. it's gonna be mephisto and oh it's gonna be this and that and this and i think a lot of the anger that came out online were for from some of these um youtubers and their predictions being wrong and it's like well this is not your choice what the story is that they want to tell so yeah you were wrong and now you know, you, you were banking on it for your subscribers, but oh well, you know, it's uh, yeah, this, it's a series. It's having fun with it. Mm-hmm. This week in the Major Spoilers uh, Weekly, which is an email that goes out, people can sign up for free over at Majorspoilers.com. That's what the whole uh, letter was about this week was, wow, WandaVision didn't use my fan theory. <laughs> right. And it's like, no, they don't have to because yeah. they're being, they are being, uh, the, the writers and the directors and everybody is are following three tenets. Number one, they have to be true to themselves. And they set out to tell a story about somebody who is going through great grief, mm-hmm. who made an error in judgment that affected a lot of people. And in the process, she had to go back and correct that error. So they're being totally true to themselves. And we see evolution of that character in that. And they have to be true to their producer. Kevin Feige is, uh, you know, knows he has a bigger vision for what's going on with the MCU. So they have to satisfy his needs and wants. And then the third thing is satisfying audience needs and wants, but not in a way that you have to say, Oh, I have um, I have a say in how the creation of this product works. Disney, other major corporations look at us as consumers. They want you to consume. They don't care whether you like or don't like something. They just want you to consume. And so when you understand those three tenets of what goes into creating something, then from the very, you know, and I think I need to go back and do a little bit more research, but I was thinking about this this morning. Marvel doesn't do anything as a as a huge surprise. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, go, you know, very early on, they will show you a big bad. Mm-hmm. They will show you who the villain of a movie is mm-hmm. very early on. Mm-hmm. And very rarely does it turn out to be something else. I was just thinking about Doctor Strange and how, you know, when Mads Mikkelsen goes uh, all nut- nuts at the beginning, he's already working for Mordrew at that point. Mm-hmm. And he even says it. So it's no surprise then when he, you know, when, when Mordrew shows up later. It's like, well, they told you this at the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was never going to be Mephisto. I've, I've gone off before about how Disney has, in the last couple of years, really doubled down on the fact that Disney means family and family entertainment means <laughs> no cursing, no <laughs> bloody violence. Satan as the big no dad? No boobies and definitely no Satan. Go look on your yeah. Disney Plus right now and see if you can find <laughs> Devil and Max Devlin, and you're not going to find it. No, also, it's, oh, it's got Bill point. Cosby in it, and that's the other reason. Yeah, that's the so. other reason, yeah. Right. Are we going to get, what was the, the uh, Elizabeth... Uh, 
Oh, man. It was a remake. Not Devil and Max Devlin, but there was another one. The Devils. Like where where um, Elizabeth... Why am I forgetting her name? Married to Hugh Grant for a long time. Oh, uh, the oh yeah, yeah. I know which one you're talking about. It was about. a remake of the movie where I think Dudley Moore and... Yes. Um, yeah, it's another one you're never going to see on... on mm-hmm. Disney Plus. Yep, Not exactly. Elizabeth Hurley, thank no. you. Yeah, Elizabeth Hurley. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hurley. Hurley, that's who it was. I couldn't think of it yes. either. So, um, Dazzled, right. So, does... Uh, uh, was it, uh, I had a thing to add to that, and I forgot what it was. It was pretty good, too. Boy, it was The really... Devil? <laughs> devil and Max no, Devil? No, I was really boiling Bill Cosby, up. Elizabeth Hurley? It was boiling up in my, my guts here, and I don't remember what it was. I guess... Family means it, Disney? Uh, uh, oh, I know what it is. I don't know why that if somebody says, you know what's going to happen, Ian McKellen's going to show up, he'll be Magneto, he'll just be there at the mm-hmm. end or whatever. Come on. <laughs> like, I, I, I get mean, that it, it, I get that you've have. got some decent theories. I get that they're fun theories. Sure. I get that you yeah. like to explore those things. But when they mm-hmm. don't happen, I don't know who feels like they be, have the right, right. to be when all you, mad about that. That's weird. When you come out with a theory, you've got to be prepared for it to be wrong. Somebody yes. on Twitter that I was talking to thought, well, they're going to basically turn Scarlet Witch into Dark Phoenix. And I said, no, I mean, they pretty much already have a Scarlet Witch and Scarlet Witch, you know, whose who's, uh, chaos power is kind of destructive. And we got into a, wasn't, it certainly wasn't a heated discussion. It was a very friendly discussion. No, I saw still. that, that yeah. tweet yeah. exchange. Yeah. 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 Well, but, but so was, here's the thing. And, and we've yeah. talked about this before. Having fan theories is great because we can come on the morning stream and we can talk about them. We can tweet each other about them. We can go online and share them with other people. We can go to our water coolers or our comic book shops or wherever. And we can talk about, man, did you see WandaVision? Oh, my gosh, how great it was. What do you think is going to happen next? And we can go and we can talk all we want. And that is half the fun, Mm -hmm. right? That is the most fun is because you're now engaged with that media as opposed to, oh, did you watch WandaVision last night? Yeah, it's okay. See you, Bob. I gotta go do some accounting right now. <laughs> right. It, that accounting. is the that's the fun part. It's yeah. it's literally the journey, not only just the hero's journey that we see happen with Wanda and her revelation. If you if you follow the story circle or however you want to follow it, but it's also the journey that the audience gets to take with that. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people just kind of miss that part of all the fun that we had for the last nine weeks, or if you're Scott, oh. the last four and a half weeks. <laughs> all that fun that we've had. I maintain is, is, is by the, the way, point of enjoying this com I, enjoying this content. I maintain to my dying breath the best way to watch that show is in as big a chunk as you can get it, either the entire thing or five episodes at once. Like I think that Agreed. show suffers yeah. from being too spread out, and it's not the kind of thing you want. You want to binge it. You want to just eat it. And For so sure, I, I'm happy. I, I, I agree. Did it. I'm. I wish they would have given the first three episodes all at once because it needs. You need that mm-hmm. that breaking of the fourth wall in the third episode to um to really make you feel like you know where the series is going and it's not just going to be ah we're making fun of the dick van dyke show ah we're making fun of bewitched yeah because they had i mean they had a couple of moments they had the colored light in the one black and white commercial uh Mm -hmm. they had this where the dude choked that was clearly off off script right right. so they had these moments that were supposed to make you feel like oh discordant this isn't something's wrong but brian's right they didn't really give us a view yeah, of any yeah. of that until the third fourth episode or whatever i really enjoyed like cranking and i and, and, and it was also just this like oh i gotta keep going gotta keep going and i didn't know there were going to be two post credits things at the end of this last one and there were mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. last one i assume rambo's talking about because she meets with a not krill what are they called kree kree the no she's that those are scrolls scroll. yeah, scroll, scroll that's what i meant scroll yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched watched Under Siege, and there's a guy named Krill, played by Gary Busey. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so there's a scroll there at the end, and then she's like, uh, "Your old pal needs to see you." She's talking about she's talking about uh, Nick Fury. Nick Fury, yeah, Nick Fury, right? Yeah, he's so, up there on the uh, spaceship with the other sort of light. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so what is that? Do you think this is just a question? Because again, Captain now we're Marvel just fan theorying. Is this soon. them? Is this them draping together this to a movie, or is this them draping this to another show? Because I've heard some people go, oh, we're getting a Monica yeah, Rambeau spinoff. It's to a movie. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, we know that Monica Rambeau is going to be in Captain Marvel 2 and uh, probably f- more fully on as Photon um, or Spectrum or whatever mm-hmm. whatever version of that uh, she's going to be. Yeah. I liked her a lot. Mm-hmm. I, kept, I kept thinking that her hair would be hard to manage. It would just be hard to keep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She has I a lot of, of everybody. Yeah. Like everybody, I think that of. Yeah. Everybody but Vision. He's just like, you know, metal bald guy. Don't have to worry That's about right, it. Exactly. I can relate to you, Vision. But I'll give you, I'll give them credit in that finale for spending some money on effects. I thought the fights in the air looked great. 
Like that stuff mm-hmm. felt like film film level quality stuff. And uh, I never once went, oh, well, we really went the cheap route on this on this TV show. And they kind of did spend it all in one episode, but 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 still, it held up and you know felt like it fit in the universe without feeling like it was a separate TV thing, uh, which I liked a lot. So bring on the Falcon and and uh, Zippy Head, and let's go. With the fake arm and the and the and who 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 wants to use the shield business? Let's go. Let's make that happen on the nineteenth. Well, I'm ready. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's what week and a half, two weeks yeah. uh, that we that it comes. So we can yeah. week from Friday, and and in between, you've got a chance to watch Marvel Legends, which sets mm-hmm. up. Uh, these are great. Like especially if you've got a family member who wasn't as into the MCU stuff as you were, you can have them watch these little mini sodes of Marvel Legends, which sets up. All four of the characters were the primary characters we're going to get in uh, um, Falcon Winter Soldier. Nice. Yep. Well, start th- your fan theories, everybody. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I think they're going to get married by the end of the uh, series. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that seems about right. They'll fly yeah. off together with Falcon's wings. And, and I'm going to be so mad at Disney. I'm going to cancel Disney if they don't do that. Yeah, they better do that. My fan theory better come through or forget it. I'm out. I'm going to mm-hmm. subscribe mm-hmm. to Paramount Plus. That's my next subscription. <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. Go watch that real world. Yeah, uh, why reading. not? Yeah. Uh, hey, well, this has been great. Uh, Steven Schleicher, always a pleasure to hang out. But uh, we always like to make sure people know about what's happening on your network and what's happening within mm-hmm. your space. Why don't you tell them where to go and what to do? Well, like I said, if you want to get uh, some of my weekly reflections on things that are going on in pop culture or other things, head over to Majorspoilers.com and sign up for the Major Spoilers Weekly, which is an email that comes out once a week. We're not going to flood you with, uh, you know, with junk every other day, uh, like some, you know, email subscriptions that you may accidentally subscribe to when you uh, go to go to those sites. Um, comes out once a week. Original content you're not going to find anywhere else, but it's a place where you can go and, and say, oh, what you know, what does what does Stephen think about this WandaVision controversy? Well, I already talked about that. I've I've talked before about you know what I thought about uh, is going on with DC Comics uh, and them being sold off. Not going to happen, uh, and a bunch of other things. So go check that out. It's the Major Spoilers Weekly. Nice. Uh, that's go check that out, Stephen. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. Stay hydrated. Oh, <laughs> hydrated. Everybody. Hydrate. Hydrate. Stay hydrated. Hydrate. Hail Hydra, he said. He said, Hail I heard it. Hail Hydra, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah. He's Baron Zevon. All right, let's get in here and uh, <laughs> make us uh, make us a fun time at the end of the Baron show. Zivon. That's not right, is it? What am I trying to say? Uh, that's the that's the guy that created uh, that used Hydra to help create a werewolf in London. There it yeah. is. Uh, yeah, Zemo. Okay. Baron Zemo is who you're talking about. Yeah, Zemo. Somehow <laughs> Warren Zevon got in there somehow. <laughs> uh, that was stupid. All right, let's do a mashup. This is a Monday morning mashup brought to you by TMS Mashups, Jamie. And uh, this one is called GHWB. Don't know why. You'll find out when we do as I play it right now. Hey, everybody. Hey, you want to smoke? My face is a vagina like and a penis. penis. I'm wearing sunglasses. <laughs> do you have a voice? I don't think he had a voice. No, he never had a voice. <laughs> Nobody said anything but the following term, blender sofa. Can they go retrieve materials for me? No, they can lick your uh, your dirty bumhole. Dirty, oh, well, dirty that's, bumhole. That's all right. I guess I was trying to build a machine that was going to do that, so now I can. <laughs> so you would walk up to me and go, blender sofa, blender sofa, blender sofa, blender sofa. And then I'd go, blender sofa, like a question. And you'd say, eh, blender sofa, blender sofa. It was so fun watching these two do it. Now I have to think for myself. Um, No, who's the guy that uh, did that really cool crossover rock album? Oh, my God. Why can I not remember? Um, Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Shoot. Chandler Candelier. Uh, All right. Now I'll look it up. All right. Penrose Vaughn (laughs) Stipend. Yeah, that's all. I see it all the time. Just poking its head out going, hey, remember me? (laughs) We got to keep this cock here. He can't go anywhere. He's staying here. Oh, my God. Just picturing the... This chicken pacing the floor. Yep. Come on, when are you going to get me out of yeah, here? Get me you, out screw, here. you dirty screws. I want to talk to my lawyer, see? Uh, I say, I say, I, I want <laughs> Picture Foghorn Leghorn in jail. That's what I picture. <laughs> I say, I say, I, I demand to see uh, my lawyer. Where's my lawyer? My, my, I say, my lawyer. All right, what the hell am I doing? Uh, most people with the vaccine are not in the right range for okay cupid right. or freaking yes. you just have to come to my nursing home and pick me up and take me out for soda i just need to be back by six o'clock yeah. bedtime yeah we could have uh, intercourse in the car <laughs> <laughs> you clean your toilet once a week oh That's just right. come take now, me now take me now he had anally inserted 15 boiled and peeled eggs while under the influence of ghb 
Ah, sure. Yeah. The old GHB, yeah. sure. Watch out, George Herbert Walker Bush. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's exactly. He was under his influence. He's watching old tape of him G- going, G- I will yeah, not raise GHWB. taxes. Yeah. Read my lips. No new taxes. Oh, put the when eggs he, up my bum. Put them in. When he, when he finished, they put up a big sign that said, Mission Accomplished. <laughs> Yes, we know that was Bush Jr. who put up the sign of Mission Accomplished. We know. That's yes, part of the we job. covered that after that episode, or uh, yeah. during that episode. Just for context, keep your emails to yourselves. Send us emails about other things is what I'm trying to say. Uh, well done, Jamie. As always, a pleasure to play those, and you always know how to find the stupid stuff we say, so thanks for doing your job. It's not really his job. We don't pay him a thing for it. He just... No. He gets he has a, zip. He, has he gets a Patre- nothing he has, from us. He has a Patreon he runs for, for doing it, though. So people can support it if they want to. Mm-hmm. Go to uh, mm-hmm. patreon.com slash TM, or, yeah, TMS mashups. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Hey, quick uh, bit of info or uh, thing here that we got to mention. Uh, uh, what? Uh, today's Monday. So to mon- uh, Monday means that uh, nothing. It means nothing. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think. We had another. I'm glad we've established this. <laughs> I thought I had another show coming up, but now that I think about it, I don't. <laughs> uh, well, you do, but not nothing that they can watch live. Yeah, they got. We got ANTP tonight, that's but that's for tonight, us, and yeah. not for you yet. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, I might be. I need to keep going in that little nightmares two thing. So maybe that'll happen today. I'll let you guys mm-hmm. know. Just keep your eye on the prize, and uh, full week of TMS and everything else we like to do. So stick around for it. We are at Patreon.com/slash/TMS. For those who'd like to support us, it's a brand new month, so why not get in now? Now is the time. A dollar a month is all you'd have to even start with. And there's great things beyond that, so go check it out. The morning stream at gmail.com is our email address, and you can find everything else at frogpants.com slash TMS. All right, tradition states we have to play a song. Do you, do you want to? Yeah. All yeah, right. Maybe. I mean, if it's tradition. Okay, Jeez. all right. Yeah, uh, Baloney Ninja uh, wrote in and said, Baloney Ninja is a... Uh, um, not just a listener of this show, but also my second in command in our alliance in uh, Marvel Strike Force. Oh, and, wow. Uh, That's cool. When I eventually just throw my hands up and say I can't play this stupid game anymore, I'm turning it all over to him. Let him manage this. Uh, <laughs> these these people. Nice. Uh, he wrote in and said, hey, Snake and Beaver, longtime listener and occasional requester. On February 18th, yes, I'm getting to this late because we had a big full end of uh, February and not much in March so far. Hint, hint. I become the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. 42. So, for this day, I request a classical reimagining of one of the greatest songs of this millennium. The Leo Moraccioli cover of the Korean ping pong song, Baby Shark. I've never heard of ping pong. Me either. But I like that. Korean ping pong song, Baby Shark. Yeah. Uh, which, as Brian Dunaway would sing it, is uh, Baby Shark. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, yours in Cthulhu signed Baloney Ninja. Nice. So this is the heavy metal version as Leo Moraccioli, uh, always produces these great metal covers of things. Uh, it's a cover of the song baby shark that listen, if it's going to get stuck in your head, this is the right version to get stuck in your head. So happy belated birthday, Baloney Ninja. And, uh, let's hear it for 42. Here is baby shark. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. <laughs> oh, Ernest, your favorite, Brian. <laughs> Love Ernest, yeah. Love, Love 